Hey guys, it's Becca from SOBs Who Love SOB. You know that because you're watching this, and I am with Donald Farmer. Yet oh. another director in my collection of awesome directors to interview. Well, I'm happy to be in your collection. I just hope you let me out of my bottle once in a while. Yeah, that's fine. Every once in a while. So. I want to I wanna be able to play with the other people in your collection. Well, one of them's here. But. <laughs> <laughs> So you're letting two people out of your box tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. Except for Tim is going to have to do some filming later. Oh, so. well, you because that's the that's the other deal is that I get them in my collection and then they put me in their movies. Well, Tim owes you big for how he tried to kill your sister. That's right. <laughs> the big rumor here at Peter's Barbecue. We are at the Rocky Top Horror Show, which is a show that you created, correct? Yeah, me and Corey Jordan, and it's here in Manchester, Tennessee, which is uh, sort of known as a concert town. This is the town where Bonnaroo happens. And we have the famous cave here that has all the 60s retro concerts, but we're trying to change the image of this town from a music town to a horror town. So, what what gave you the idea to do this? Well, I did out? a horror convention about 15 years ago, and I did that uh, in a town 80 miles from here in Cookville, Tennessee, and I did one, and... Uh, I never had done one before because the big thing with horror conventions is you need guests. And it's uh, for my first horror convention, I had some so so guests. Uh, we had Jonathan Thornton who did the makeup effects for Herschel Gordon Lewis's Blood Feast 2, and uh, we had a few other people. But really, the reason I decided to do this one after so many years was because the horror conventions that are operating now that are really great in this area, like the Full Moon Con in Nashville and Fanboy in Knoxville, they're getting really really huge major guests like Fanboy has Christina Ricci right. and uh, the other one in Nashville's had Malcolm McDowell and uh, George Romero you know giant people right and uh, I thought how about a convention that's focused more on the SOV crowd the shot on video crowd movies that don't play in theaters necessarily but that people like to order and collect on video or go on streaming yeah. for so this is more of a convention for that crowd people yeah. that are making movies that you're not necessarily going to see in a theater outside the film festival circuit yeah. but um, like I've been doing this for 30 years and I've got movies that are mainly made for video stores and nowadays my movies are made for video stores and streaming, streaming. the market has expanded but uh, you know people like uh, Hugh Gallagher over here who's yes. directed uh, movies like Verotica, and he produced Just Franco's classic Tender Flesh, or Tim Ritter, who's made the classic Truth or Dare, and Creep, and Killing Spree, and more classics, you know. Our movies aren't playing in multiplexes, but that's fine, because they're very low-budget movies, and we do have our audience, and this convention yes. is for that audience. Right, and the people who are watching this now, who are watching something on a show called SOBs Who Love SOB. <laughs> that's right. But we also have some newer filmmakers. We also have uh, Corey Jordan, who we already talked about, who did a movie called Chicken's Blood that this guy's in. Yeah, I'm um, in Corey's first movie, Chicken's Blood, which turned out great, and I'm really happy I, to be I in. bought a copy of it. I'll have to do a review. And then we also have Katie Gerlschong and Jeff Wedding, which if you guys have listened to me at all in the last few weeks, you know I love their film, Tennessee Gothic, which is a brand new movie. So it's almost like the... The classics There's a lot of film activity new... going on in Tennessee, and there has been for several years. I mean, over the years, I've Whether worked. Whether you know it or not. I've worked with many Tennessee producers. I mean, one of the most legendary ones was uh, starting in '88, and in the early '90s, I worked a lot with Richard Martin, who was a local multimillionaire real estate developer, and he was pumping. He was making local indie 35 millimeter movies with huge 30 person crews and. I worked on his uh, two and only two movies, and these movies, uh, you know, had, uh, the first one had a $350,000 budget, which is bigger than the budget of all of my movies put together. <laughs> and then the second one, he had really interesting casting, like his first movie had Camille Keaton from I Spit on Your Grave. His second movie had legendary actor Jim Van Bever and David Bowie's wife, Angela Bowie. So he had really interesting casting, but his movies cost a fortune to make because he was a big spender. He was a rich guy and a big spender. And so it's sad that he's no longer around because it was fun to have somebody local making indie movies, but with such a big budget. Right, inflated indie movies. <laughs>
And so, yeah, it's like I said, a shame he's not working around anymore, but uh, nowadays you don't necessarily need a star in your movie if you have a good enough idea, title, concept. Like I did not have any stars at all in my movie Shark Exorcist, but that managed to have the best distribution of any of my movies in quite a while. Which is a fabulous film. Yeah. Because it has a title that grabs you. If well, you have a title right. that grabs people. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's about the concept. But uh, sometimes it's nice to have a star, but you know, stars, uh, you have to figure out how much you're paying and are they going to deliver you extra sales to make up for what you're paying right. them? Or are they going to make their money, your investment back? Right. And uh, of all the stars I've ever hired, Brigitte Nielsen is my favorite in terms of making our investment back. She, what we paid her, we made it back many, many fold. All right. <laughs> it's, it's... We licensed that movie to 30 countries, and a lot of them wow. told us we're buying your movie sight unseen because we buy any movie with Virginia Wilson. Virginia Wilson. Yep. <laughs> now, she's more, now she's on the talk every day and more popular than ever. I probably couldn't afford her. Wow. No, probably not. Yeah, because she's got an American crowd. Now, now that she's you. now she's back on TV every yeah. week, I'm sure I couldn't afford her now. Yeah. I got her at the right time when I could afford her. So what are you working on right now? Well, right now I'm uh, in the final stages of post-production on Cannibal Hookers, my remake, or my reboot of my second movie, Cannibal Hookers. Okay, so reboot. Uh -huh. So what makes it different from a remake? Well, reboot just sounds nicer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is, it's the all-new Cannibal Hookers. Okay. Same title, but all-new story, all-new characters. Okay, well that's, that's a reboot. Same, that's a reboot. Then. Same situation, okay. but it's the same situation. We're dealing with hookers that like to eat their jobs. And um, that one's almost finished. My editor just sent me the rough cut two days ago, literally, and I made, I sent him notes, final editing notes, and as soon as he incorporates my final editing notes and adds some music where I told him to add music, then we'll be all finished. Awesome. And then my next movie, which we've already started on, is Bigfoot Exorcist. We've already shot two sequences for that, and most of the shooting of that, or hard and heavy shooting, will be done in March and April. All right, and then, as I said, is it a spiritual success? Successor to Shark Exorcist? Well, it's a continued adventure, so people of the cloth that find it called upon themselves right. to exercise weird creatures. Right, like like I said, like Vampire Cop and Cannibal Cop. Not related at all, just about a cop who yeah. happens to be a different creature. The big thing I really wanted, I really wanted for uh, Bigfoot Exorcist was uh, Shark Exorcist was a priest, and for this one I knew it had to be a nun. Because I've, I've never made a nun exploitation movie, and yeah. I didn't want to get into uh, uh, There's typical film genres that I like to Absolutely. tackle, if, if only uh, sort of from the side. Like, I never made an all-out biker movie, but I did make a movie, Demolition Highway, that had a lot of bikers in it, and it had biker sequences. So that's sort of my biker movie that I always wanted to make. And then I made a martial arts movie, so I've done that genre. And I always wanted to make a nunsploitation movie, so Bigfoot Exorcist will, in a way, be my nunsploitation movie. Sounds like it. So who's your nun? Well, our nun is going to be the co-star of Hooker with a Hacksaw, Colleen Eckert from Kentucky. And so she is going to be our devout sister who will face off against nature's fiercest foe, the not just any Bigfoot, but a demonically possessed Bigfoot. Man. So she has uh, she has her work lined up for her. Yeah, I would say so. She's going to need more than a cross in holy water. No, she's going to come well equipped uh, to handle this. <laughs> As to whether she's going to come out on top, that remains to be seen. I can I can say there's one thing I can safely predict. She's going to get a whole shitload of pea soup on her face. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's will be spinning. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thank you so much for talking to me. We are going to be in touch, and of course, we will be doing some of his films on our show on the actual podcast. Tony Massiello actually just joined our cast. And so uh, we have kind of a backlog of what we're doing. But yeah, well, we have to get you on. It was great to be here and call me anytime. Okay, I will.